Hello and welcome. My name is Keith Barker and I'm joined today with a very special guest here in my home studio and that is Mr. The One and Only Jeff Kish. That's me. And Jeff and I have a couple things in common. One is we both have families. Mm, yes. We both enjoy what we do, which is ed- edutainment these yeah. days. Mm-hmm. And we also love something in common, and that is networking. And so there's never been a baby born that I'm aware of where the doctor said, oh, my goodness, this is a network engineer. <laughs> All these skills are learned, but they start somewhere. And so I wondered if maybe you could take just a moment and share with us. Yeah. And then we'll get to the CCA content in a moment. How did you get into networking? Oh, yeah. No, it's fantastic. I, in college, took an electrical engineering degree or went for an electrical engineering degree, Uh took a computer networking course that completely changed my life because it was the best course or the best course. Yeah. In all four years that I took of all these electrical engineering courses. One course? One class. That was all it was. And I knew I had to get into computer networking. And so out of college, took a job hanging access points, but I used that opportunity to learn the basics of networking. And nine months later, I was in that computer room taking that CCNA. And I tell you what, that CCNA was just the start of something absolutely phenomenal. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So I, I did not go to college. I don't know if you knew that or not. Uh, you don't have to I these said, days. <laughs> no. But back in, back in the day when oh. I was young. So um, I worked as a cashier out of high school. Mm. And uh, I saw the guy who came in to fix the registers. Oh, yeah. True story. Uh-huh. came in and... I thought he was doing great because he had a car that worked well. Mm-hmm. He had his like silver briefcase Ooh. and he would repair mm-hmm. the registers. I thought, whatever he, however he learned to do that, mm. I bet it sounds like, it sounds like a better job than what I have. Yeah. So I got a student loan. This is in 1986. Uh, it's like five or $6,000 that I got as a loan. I went to technical school oh, yeah. for a year in California, learned all about resistors and things I've never actually had to use, like oh, yeah. how to calculate the resistance on yeah. a resident by color codes. Yeah, I've I, done, I did that. Yeah. As really? You can imagine, yeah. Umbrella. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I went to school to learn that, mm. and then I got hired out of school by EDS in the early days. I didn't even graduate. I, they pulled me out early because they wanted to hire me, and that's where I got involved with computer networks. And I met a gentleman named Dave Nelson, uh, who was our network guy. This is back in the day of coax. Oh, coax. in the old, yeah, yeah. in the old days. And yeah. I, and it was, it was that same moment again. It's like I'm working on these PCs. And there's this guy working on the network with servers. And what's that all about? Oh, yeah. And that was the beginning of my journey. And so back in those days, it was Novell and then Microsoft. And then I uh, had an opportunity to learn Cisco. And I just went to, it's just, I loved it. Yeah. I loved the basics, the yeah. fundamentals. And now today, when I'm working on a problem or troubleshooting something back here in my rack or something I'm teaching, it's the fundamentals that save me every day. It's yeah. like, okay, why isn't this working? Let's look yeah. at the basics. And here's the point, although we just took a little longer. Um, <laughs> of our introduction to this course for Cisco CCNA is that we love networking and we know, at least I know that it's not learned by default. And what we'd like to do is give you a real world feel and approach to the fundamentals of networking with an emphasis on Cisco because their certification. Mm -hmm. But you know what? When you're working with Juniper, HP, Palo Alto, Checkpoint, it's the same logic. Oh, yeah. Networks don't change. There's just different ways of implementing it. Yeah. I think that everyone goes through the process of how do I really get into networking? Where do I start? And depending on where you are in your journey, you might be just starting out or you might be in this network, yeah. in this industry for a while saying, okay, it's time for me to go get certified. And regardless of where you are, this course is going to walk you through with the aim of getting the CCNA, but even further, the aim of turning you into a CCNA qualified individual, somebody who can go go in and manage a network and configure switches and troubleshoot problems because that's what a CCNA is expected to do. And that is exactly what we want to create. We don't just want to pass an exam. We want to become network administrators. Yeah. And if you have the skills, if you really have the skills, whether you get the cert or not, if you get the skills, you can use them. Yeah. And uh, there's a thing in networking called QoS, Mm. quality of service. But whenever, whenever I think of QoS... I think about quality of life Oh, because the yeah. more you know the network mm-hmm. and the more yes. skills you have, the more people will pay you for those skills. Yeah. Uh, and so um, I also have a sad note I'd like to share with the with the audience. Ooh. That's you. Mm-hmm. And that is if a person just goes through the, the process of getting some certs, but they don't take the time to really learn it, they're in trouble. Yes. Because... Yes. The, the, it's just a matter of time before you're going to be called upon to do something. Yeah. We call them paper tigers, right? Yeah. yeah. Is, that, mm-hmm. is that what they're called? That's pa- a, yeah, yeah. You got the certification, but you can't actually do <laughs> the things that the certification 
would expect you to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we're going to flip the script on that. Mm. And if you want to get a certification, the training you'll get from our content together. Mm. And also John McGovern is going to join us for the automation. Yes. He's yes. like a wizard, like Absolutely. magic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, if you join for the content, you're going to have hands on lab. We're going to go through the, the pieces and parts, walk you through with real world examples, how it works. And the goal for me is to give them this, the knowledge. Yes. That way you'll know how to do it. You'll have yes. hands on labs to reinforce that. And then when you get to the real world uh, work environment, for example, and you do something like, okay, where's this computer connected in the network? You'll know. Oh, yeah. here's how the switching works. Here's how the Mac address tables work. Yeah. Here's how mm-hmm. ARP works. Here's how DHCP works Arp or works. doesn't work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then you can go ahead and troubleshoot it. So I'm excited to work with you, Jeff. I, last project we did was a wireless about a year, yeah. year yeah. or two ago. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. And wireless is definitely included also in the CCNA, yep. uh, along with a lot of other components. So we we love networking, and we believe in you, that you can improve your skills. Mm-hmm. And again, improving your skills is going to improve your life. Yep. Uh, and networking is, I don't think the demand is going to go up mm-hmm. over time. Yep, it hasn't changed. Hasn't changed. And yep. cybersecurity mm-hmm. is yep. super important. More and more. But people say, oh, I want to get into cybersecurity. It's like, well, you better... You better understand how the network works first before you identify <laughs> yeah. about how to secure it and build in that security oh, yeah. because it's all related. Isn't that fascinating? Because yeah. you can go a whole lot of different directions. You know, you might be in a role where you need to know wireless more or security or voice over IP. But if you don't have the foundations yeah. of routing and switching, there's you're, you're always going to be missing that. Yep. And so the CCNA is such an important process. It doesn't matter what vendor you want to work with eventually. It doesn't matter what technology you want to work with eventually. The CCNA is a phenomenal foundational exam. And by going through this process, again, not just passing certification, but learning the material, it's going to set you up to be a better engineer overall and more competent and more qualified and that can only take your career a good place. Yeah. And so you are a double CCIE. I am, as for, are you. And for <laughs> <laughs> I woke up one day it happened. Yeah. So mm-hmm. um for for individuals who are for people who are just starting their journey in the world of, of networking, there's a lot of different options involved. And to get a CCIE it takes just a crazy amount of attention mm-hmm. and consistent study over years. But the secret also is that we're building layers. It's like foundation. Mm-hmm. It all goes back to the basics mm-hmm. and then being very creative with all those ingredients in different yes. scenarios and troubleshooting. So we're, we're excited about this journey together. What other aspect that's really important in the world of learning new skills? For mm-hmm. example, I saw a, a, sh- a musical many years ago called The Music Man. Have you ever seen this? I, <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say I've never seen it. That's okay. It's really old. <laughs> I, know, I know it. I know it well. So the premise is this guy comes into the small community mm-hmm. and he convinces all of them that their children Children should learn how to play an instrument, and he unfortunately he's a, sh- uh, a shamster. Mm, What's the mm-hmm. word? What's, there's a better word for shamster. Uh, a scam artist. Yeah, scam sure. artist. Perfect. Yeah. He's a charlatan. That's mm, what that's what you're looking for. And he's basically like, okay, we don't have the instruments yet, but give me mm. the money, and they'll become. They're gonna visualize and imagine us practicing with these instruments, which doesn't work. No. I mean, it could be good for emotional support. Like, oh, I think I can play the trumpet. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> like my the joke my dad always told was. Um, a gentleman had his hand, or person, could be anybody, had their hand smashed in an accident. Mm. And the surgeon is working on their hand, and, and, this, and the patient said, will I ever be able to play the piano? He goes, yeah, your hand's going to completely heal. And the guy says, the person says, great, I always wanted to play the piano. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's not going to happen. So as far as the practice goes, we also have hands-on labs for you as part of the content here at CBT Nuggets. And they're integrated, so there'll be a small discussion, a big-picture overview uh, here's we're gonna focus on DHCP or ARP or whatever the topic is, mm-hmm. and then hands-on practice for the practice with implementing and verifying those skills. And that's a big secret that if you just read a book or just watch a video or two, you can get a lot of knowledge that way. Yeah. But the hands-on reinforcement is gonna be great. And so yeah. most of our content um, for routing and switching and so forth, and access control list and spanning tree. All that's going to be hands-on as well. So you'll have the opportunity to go ahead and do hands-on practice to reinforce those skills and to reinforce the concepts. I remember I was studying for an exam once. It was a CCNP level exam, but nonetheless. Now, and, for people who are brand new, maybe what is a CCNP? Oh, fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Once you pass the CCNA, you'll be maybe looking at the next level certification and you want to be even more marketable and learn more uh, in-depth content and so the skills. S- Cisco certified so network professional. Network professional. Okay, yep. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Professional level. We usually have associate level exams, professional level exams, and then expert level exams. You see that across the vendors. You see that across the industries in a lot of ways, but especially within the networking world across many vendors. 
failed the exam, actually. And I came away mm. from that exam thinking, you know what my problem was in that situation? Was that? I had not enough hands-on experience. Oh. I had spent all my time focused on reading the book and learning and memorizing the facts. Uh-huh. And uh, when I was taking the exam, they were asking about outputs and they were asking about commands. And oh. I realized that even though I'd memorized a lot, I didn't have the hands-on experience. So it's so important to find the balance because there are things we have to memorize. Yes, yes. There are absolutely yep. tables we're going to have to study and yep. things that are just something we'll be staring at notes and watching a video, looking at a page, whatever the situation is, but the hands-on experience is part of that equation. And if we never put our hands on the configuration of a switch or never configure a router and we're trying to pass the CCNA without it, we're it's an uphill battle. Yeah. And worst case scenario could be that we actually pass the exam and we're at that, <laughs> that point we're not qualified. We can't actually do it. Yeah. And so we need to make sure whether it's for passing the exam, but more importantly for doing our jobs well, yeah. we need that hands-on experience. Yeah. I, I remember I went to work at a company. We did CCA training this many years ago. Mm. And there was an expert who was there onboarding me. And so... He was testing me. Okay. So we were doing remote, we were terminaling, we were doing uh, remote, uh, reverse telnet back in the day. That used to be a thing. Yeah. Uh, to that, yeah. Terminal server, reverse telnetting in. And we were setting it up and he, he, he could do it. I knew he could do it, but he wanted to watch me do it. It's like, hey, yeah, why don't you set up reverse ter- terminal services for this rack of gear? Yeah. And he watched me and I, and I realized that halfway through, oh, he's seen if I can do this. Mm-hmm. That's really real though for mm-hmm. production yeah. environments. Like if you go to a job interview and they say, how does, <laughs> our favorite one. How's our work? Right? That's my favorite question to ask. <laughs> or some other, tell some you other basic it, element yeah. that mm-hmm. is used. Like DNS happens. That's probably the most used application on the internet. Because every time there's yeah. DNS, DNS. So if somebody says, okay, how does DNS work with a recursive lookup? Uh, the reason that's important to know is because if it fails, we want to be able to troubleshoot it. But uh, in a job interview also, if they ask you a question about that, they're not going to hire you and pay us a, a significant salary just because you know something. Right, they also right. want you to be able to deliver on the goods mm-hmm. and actually troubleshoot it, configure yeah. it, set it up. So now that you've heard from us for a moment, you're going to be hearing a lot more from us, but I have three basic things I'd love for you to do. Number one, I'd love you to commit. Commit mm-hmm. to completing the training and gaining the skills. Number two, I'd like you to set a schedule and an intention. And that doesn't mean like, oh, I'm going to study, but right. I'm going to study when and where and what. For example, let's imagine that we're studying uh, switching. So it's like, okay, tomorrow at 2 p.m., I'm going to dedicate one hour and study switching. I'm going to start by watching 30 minutes of video. I'm then going to do the lab associated with that skill, that set of videos, Mm -hmm. and then set the intention. Then before you're done on the day, set an intention for the next day. Like, okay, tomorrow I'm going to complete my studies on switching Mm -hmm. because I realize I don't know what it is now. (laughs) Because that happens all the time. It's like, oh, yeah, I've got this down. That's not... It's not, it's not yeah. what I thought it was. And so, okay, so three things. But, but consider- it's important to write it down too. Yes. Because when you write down a goal, oh, yes, that yes. makes a big difference too. Perfect. So not only to make the plan, write it down on paper. Share it with a friend. There you go. Share it with someone. Make sure that you've yep. got that accountability. Absolutely. So if, so number one, commit to completing mm-hmm. the journey with a second. Write down the goals as far as when you're going to study and what. Be very specific. Let your loved ones know that you're... You know, I remember I get my first CCA. I had, I think I had four kids at the time yeah. and there wasn't a lot of free time. You know how this is. Mm. Well, I didn't have a lot of free time, but I carved out three or four hours, four or five days a week outside mm. of my normal work <laughs> to study. And it was a lot of sacrifice by mm. everybody who was around me. And the third thing I'd say for everybody is have fun. Life is in the journey. We're all going to die. <laughs> I know that's grim, but you know what? While we're alive, make a difference. Go from here to here and then go from here to here every day. And if sometimes you have a bad day, I mean, we're all human. It just goes down. Just turn off the lights, shut the door, lock the door, have a bad day. And then tomorrow, you set the goal for tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow at 8 a.m., I'm going to get up and I'm going to do it again and just keep on moving. So life. We're not robots. There, there's no. grace to be had, yeah, right? Absolutely. Find, find the balance. Make sure you have that healthy balance with your family and your loved ones, as well as with the study material to make sure, because we're all, we're all in this. We're all sacrificing. That's the key word. Yep. Sacrificing for something better, to yep. be better at our jobs, to be more marketable, to obtain the CCNA. And so it's worth it in the end, but we have to go about it in such a way that we are ultimately successful. And the rewards are amazing. See the switch? I bought it. It's $40 switch. I bought it without checking with anybody because I can afford it. Gosh darn it. I'm a grown up. That's right. I can adult on I'm, my own. I'm good enough. I'm smart enough. 
Have you ever see Stuart Smalley saves saves his family? <laughs> no. It's a Paramount picture from uh, 20 years ago when uh, I worked there. Anyway, it's uh, oh, Al Franken. Al Franken reports. Oh, really? Al Franken plays the role. Oh, geez. And he's always doing these motivational stuff. I'm good enough. I'm smart enough. And gosh darn it, I deserve it. So one of the benefits, Jeff, as you know, about getting good at something is that you can have humor and fun. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it goes over people's heads. Like that UDP joke. Like uh, <laughs> UDP joke? <laughs> I don't think I got that one. I would tell you a UDP joke. Yeah. But you probably wouldn't get it. <laughs> or you might not get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I ruined that. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> so I know there's a lot of cool topics in the world mm -hmm. of networking, servers, yeah. all the connectivity between them and everything else. So oh, yeah. what what is just off the top of your head, what is one exciting topic that just like, oh, yeah, this is amazing? Oh, yeah. Well, CCNA is full of really great topics, a lot of them that we're going to use a lot okay. in our jobs. Um, I got to say. Routing protocols, though, that's something that I really get excited about. I really do. Okay. I, I, for a long time, I was very focused on layer two. Once I got to layer three and deploying EIGRP and OSPF and BGP, and I know EIGRP is no longer on the blueprint, but OSPF and BGP are still. And there's just, when you bring a routing layer three environment together, you get, we call it routing convergence. It's a fancy phrase, right? Where everything is converged. We've got the, the full routing everywhere. At that point, it is a beautiful thing. So that to me is very exciting. There's just so much that is to it. You can continue to go deep beyond CCNA with routing, and there's just so much to cover. Okay, 60-second pop quiz for something brand new to routing IP. Mm. Routing IP for a newbie in 60 seconds. Go. Including right. an analogy if you want. Oh, boy. Well, no pressure here. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. So routing. Imagine that you are trying to send a letter okay. to somebody across the country or maybe even to another country. Yep. Well, you don't want that letter to go to the post office and then go to another state and another country, potentially another region, and then it ends up going to the wrong country, and then it ends up going back to the right one. It took a very inefficient path. Maybe it never even got there. We need to make sure our networking packets are doing that, basically. We need them to land where they're supposed to go, and we need them to get there in as efficient of a manner as possible. Awesome. So, Keith, what are you excited about? I am so excited about models. Oh. <laughs> models? <laughs> not like, not like you know, oh, they got a new jacket, here's a model showing the jacket or whatever, mm. but um, protocol stack models regarding taking a concept like you know, IP protocols and how they work and breaking it down okay. into smaller, logical, easy to digest pieces. A long time yeah. ago, there was a thing called the OSI reference model. Oh, and sometimes if you're that. in the time machine on the internet, people are talking about the OSI reference model. OSI re we don't use the OSI reference model. Like I had a, a tech, <laughs> well, you know what we, I was like, no, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I'm sorry, but we don't actually, we use the protocol stack called TCP IP, hmm. either version four or version six. And there's a hybrid terminology that we borrowed from the legacy model, the uh, OSI reference model. This is this is gold. Know, this is the I'm... gold you're about to get on our course. Yeah, right. So the TCP IP protocol has four layers. Right. So we use a five-layer model when we talk about TCP IP. Correct. So what we've done is we've taken a couple of the numbers mm -hmm. and names from the OSI model, right. and we've replaced or added to the, t the literal TCP IP protocol stack. Okay. And that's what we use. Okay. So with TCP IP, it's called the internet layer. Right. Not the network layer. Right. We borrow that. Uh, the bottom two, instead of physical and data link, it was one in the TCP. Right. I remember they come So we, that, we yeah. borrow those two. Boom. Right. Bring them over. It's not, so it's a hybrid. When we talk about the protocol stack and the model for TCP IP, and then the application layer is five, six, and seven. Right. So right. it's like, who cares about? Usually I just blur those all together. Like you said, layer five yeah. through seven or whatever. But when we talk about the protocol stacks that we use and love today in the world of IP, I'll make that clarification. Yeah. We are not talking literally about the OSI reference model or the literal TCP IP stack itself because we borrowed and we borrowed labels mm -hmm. and levels. It's a, it's a mashup of right. some of the names and some of the numbers with the existing protocol stack. So what gets I me was... excited about networking? <laughs> Discussing it with other network yeah, no engineers. Kidding. You get passionate about it. Yeah. So if you're ready, we're ready, and we'll see you in the very next set of videos. Until then, we hope this has been informative, and we'd like to thank you for viewing.